everyone, it's Shell from Scrap Secrets and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is part of a hop for the card hopping group that is over on the Handmade Happiness Facebook page. And we are going to be using some stamps and dies from Concord and Ninth called the City Stack Stamps and Dies to create this card. I have a piece of Canson XL watercolor paper that measures eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter to make an A2 size card. And you'll see there that I put the tree line die down and held it into place with some washi tape, ran it through my die cutting machine and then cut off the excess at the top. So we're gonna call this the mullet card because it's shaped in the front, but it's a full card in the back. So that's what we're gonna call this one. I'm now taking the stamp that coordinates with that die and stamping it in some Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. I stamped it a couple times because this is rougher paper. It's Canton XL watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is not smooth, so it did take a couple of tries. And then you'll notice that very end piece doesn't have any grass stamped on it, so I just moved the other end over masked off the rest of the back of my card and just inked up that little piece, lined it up and stamped that grass down. So once that was stamped, I was trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. I originally wanted to have the houses on the inside, but it didn't look right because the trees covered too much of it. And then if not, the houses were kind of up in the air. So I decided to take the city buildings and put those on the inside. And then I'm going to stamp the houses on the outside. So this challenge was a theme of new beginnings and the techniques were either pencils or watercolor pencils and I am horrible with regular pencils but I love watercolor pencils. I'm going to be using some Derwent Ink Tense watercolor pencils to color this whole scene in which is why we're using the watercolor paper as a card base. I normally don't do that. I would normally do just panels of it and then stick it on a regular card base but since I wanted to do watercolor for the entire thing and use as much of it with watercolor pencils as possible, I decided to do all watercolor card. So you see here, I, I zoomed in a little bit and I'm going to be doing one of my favorite techniques, which is just laying a couple of different colors down just sporadically throughout that treetop. So you can see there that I use three different shades of green. And then I'm going to take a paintbrush with clean water and then just mix those colors around. So really that's what I did for most of this card. And you're going to see a couple different techniques here. My favorites are this one, which is laying a couple of colors down and then mixing them together. It reminds me of those old books that you used to have that um, had the, like it was like an invisible ink marker and you would color over top of the dots on there and then the colors would appear so they would mix and, and create different colors. Um, probably not explaining it correctly, but it's like little kids have them too. Um, I know that my nieces have had those books. I know they have them in Target and stuff. So, um, but that kind of reminds me of that. And you, so you'll see here that I'm just scribbling some color down. I also will take the paintbrush with a little bit of water on it to the tip of the watercolor pencil and pick up some color that way. That creates a stronger color. So if I really wanted to do a highlight or um, you know make something a little bit darker, I will go in with the uh, the paintbrush to the pencil tip and then color that in and you'll see that I think I left this part in it took me here you go I was I actually picked up that color from the other tree but then I will go in with my uh, paintbrush to the tip of the pencil and then uh, pick up some color that way you can kind of see that there so those are just a couple of the ways that I really like to color with these watercolor pencils. I kind of think that they're idiot proof. Um, I feel like if I can do them, anybody can. And I, you know, definitely I'm not the best colorist in the world, but I love using these. I think it makes it so much easier than using regular watercolor. So for this month, our theme was, like I said, was new beginnings. And I was really having a hard time with it. Lately, I've been struggling with themes and I thought, moving is definitely a new beginning um, moving to like I kind of thought this card would represent kind of moving to a new city so maybe the city was on the inside and they were moving to the suburbs so you know they were leaving the city behind and that's kind of the story that I had behind it really it isn't for anybody there's no reason for this other than the challenge to create this 
Okay, so let's go back to the coloring a little bit. Here, I'm just using what little color I had left on my brush and picking up some clean water and putting the color down. And now you'll see I'm taking a lighter green and going in with the rest and kind of creating layers of grass. So I'm doing all different color greens there. You can see I picked up a lot of that green, um, pulled some water out. So the coloring is pretty repetitive, so I cut a lot of it out because I kind of just do the same things over and over. So here, I'm just coloring directly on onto the building this one would not blend for some reason I don't know what it was about the color but it just would not blend I don't know if I didn't have enough water I'm really not sure what I did but it, you can see it was really really giving me a hard time so I do come in with a different color um, later on and kind of get that to blend a little bit better so I'm just picking a couple different grays because I didn't want this background to stand out I wanted the houses on the front to stand out more so this one was going to be kind of like the all gray buildings in the city so i hope that you guys are enjoying this hop uh, to see everybody's video it's a little bit different we usually have them linked in the description below but we've decided to go with a hashtag theme for uh, these cards so the hashtag is going to be in the title of the video so you can click on that and see everybody's videos um, I believe there's about 10 of us that are on this hop so I'm excited to see what everybody else does for new beginnings and excited to learn some new techniques with some regular pencils and maybe I'll get some pointers so that I can uh, practice with pencils because like I said watercolor pencils I'm, I'm okay with but regular pencils just not, I've, I've done a couple of, of good things but I don't know. I don't love most of the results when I use regular pencils. So you can see here, I just went in with a couple colors of blue, picked up some water with a little bit of a thicker brush, and I'm just going over the background. Now the uh, sky will be nice and streaky, and that's fine. If you don't like that technique, you could actually just pick up the color with the brush. I did not mind it at all. There's some streaks in there. There's different colors because obviously the sky is not all one color. And I just thought that this would be kind of like a nice, almost dusk time when it's, you know, when the sun is setting and the sky is getting a little bit darker. So um, you know, some would be setting. So the lighter color would be at the bottom and then the darker, almost as it's almost turning to like a black night sky would be at the top. So um, I did make a mistake on the one side. I did, instead of going left to right or right to left with the brush, I did go up and down with it. And you can kind of see those strokes um, in the sky on the left-hand side, but it's okay. Um, I don't think anybody's really looking at that. So the next thing that I did was I took this welcome die that comes in that same City Stacks die set ran it through my bitty buzz cutter three times and I used my honeybee be creative glue to put dots on the back of all of this this is a really really thin die cut uh, if I had some of that double-sided tape or the Xyron I would have used that but I don't so I'm just putting teeny tiny dots on there I cut this out three times and stack them together and put them on the card front on the bottom left hand side kind of where that uh, middle grass part was because I don't think it looked as good as some of the other parts I kind of wanted to cover some of that up plus it was the space that I thought it would look the best in so the outside is going to say welcome and then I the inside I'm going to stamp to the neighborhood so that's going to be the sentiment for this I thought that would be a great new beginning because you know it, new beginnings I was thinking baby cards so I probably could have done a baby card um, but I also thought new beginnings could mean moving into a new house moving to a new city um, so just thought that this would be cute and I've had this stamp set for a really long time and haven't used it in a while so I thought that it would be cool to do kind of this what I'm calling a mullet card so now I'm stamping that to the neighborhood on the inside and I'm using a stamp block so I'm being very very brave by doing that uh, because I did not prep the stamp I didn't do anything I would normally use my misty but didn't feel like dragging it back out 
the last thing that I'm going to do for the card is to add a little bit of yellow to all the windows. I picked three different shades of pencils and colored in the windows. Didn't worry about adding any water because they're so tiny. And that will wrap up the card for today. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. Hopefully you joined us along the hop. And if you have comments or questions, leave them below. And I'll see you guys again real soon for another video. Bye!